Bottom of the barrel, hey. bottom of the barrel, cause hey. the barrel is only hey. two. Welcome back to Bottom of the Barrel, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, your host, as usual, Wes Barker. Today, we are missing Chris Ramsey for the second week in a row. It's almost starting to become a good podcast. Today, <laughs> we have a guest host today, a uh, comedian, uh, actor, actually. we got to get into that a little bit later. This is uh, one of the greats. This guy, is, he's won a Juno, right? He won Homegrown a million years ago on Just, for, just ago. for Laughs. Uh, he has a half hour special on Netflix in Comedians of the World. Yeah. He has a one on Crave called I Love You Habibi, which I may or may not have been listening to on the way to pick you up today. That's fine. And uh, yeah, no, it w- was it though? Was it fine? <laughs> <laughs> this is Dave Merhej, everybody. Yeah! Round of applause. Woo! This is our first day meeting, and I picked him up like an Uber driver at the airport. And um, That's very kind of you. Yeah, no, I, I need the first day meeting. I needed to abuse you for my own benefits and the benefit of the podcast. No, man, I mean getting um, getting someone to pick you up from the airport in this day and age. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Is your. That's tough. I don't know anyone that's getting picked up from airports anymore. I, I think because my wife's a flight attendant, I go there like three times a week already. To pick her up. Yeah, I pick her up, drop her off. So I'm just like, what? what's another loop of the airport for me? I mean, but that's what I mean. You're you're part of the good, the last of the pickup airport people. That's true. But you have right? no choice. When your wife's a flight attendant, you have no choice. But you're still doing it. Like, I mean, for me, like my friend i have a couple friends i i where i live in los angeles that will pick me up from the airport yeah two good buddies that will pick me up if i ask them will pick me up and you pick them up or do you not have a car i would yeah yeah if i if they asked me do you have a car though i do okay so then yeah then i'll pick them up but i mean it's very that's what I mean. It's very rare. Because that's a good way out of it, though. If you don't, if you do like, I just, if you don't have a car, then no one will ever ask you for that kind of <laughs> shit. You just be like, I'm I good. did for a while. I'm not good. have I'm when good. I first moved there, I didn't have a car. Yeah, um, I, I think, I think it's, it's good though, like to, uh, because like I've been in that situation where I need a fucking ride, you yeah. know, and like Uber from there to downtown sometimes like sixty five bucks. I mean, but the good thing about Toronto is they have the Up Express. Oh right, I never do so that. You could jump on the Up Express for maybe five bucks or something. Yeah, and it takes you to. Three places, right? It takes you to Union oh, for yeah. sure, Dundas, and then the uh, before Dundas. I don't know what stop it is. I never. Then you could just Uber from wherever you are. So for you, you just go to Union. And then that's, that's a $10, $15 Uber now. Not even, maybe. Not even. I mean, I, I don't want to give your location away. They already know. Oh, okay. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, yeah it's not. Uh, it's it's probably more beneficial. It won't be 60 bucks. I know that for sure. No, that's tr- I should try that. I think my wife's done that before, but I've never done it. I don't know why I'm so, like, averse to... To taking uh, the fucking whatever, whatever they call it here, the train. What's it called? What do they call it here? The Vancouver is the Sky Train. What do they call it the Up here? Yeah. Up, no, but that's like the that's not. It's not like the subway. The Up Express is pretty dope. Yeah, I've taken it before. I'm just like not. It's not something I think about. My yeah. wife's always when I'm with her, we'll take it. It's so I, it's so easy. It's so easy. <laughs> when it's I'm like in, the Sky Trains. When I'm in New York, I'll take the fucking I'll take the the subway all the time. But when I'm in Toronto, I never think to take anything other than a fucking Uber. I seen. I mean, are you talking about within the city? Yeah, within the city. I'm constantly. Yeah, you gotta take advantage of these trains out here. <laughs> no, man, I don't it's know why I don't do it. So much. I live right in front of. I see the GO train all the time, and I've never taken it anywhere. I don't no, I don't take the GO. I mean, if you're taking the GO train, you're getting out of town. You, I guess. Yeah, right? you're not, you don't need to take the GO train. <laughs> okay, good. Just be, you're going to Oshawa. I don't think you want to. Oh go shit! Right. I meant to tell. Sorry uh, for anyone who's watching this today. Um, you're probably like, where the fuck are you guys? Uh, we're in my theater room. In my building has a theater room. I don't think anyone ever uses it. But I was like, it's probably going to be pretty good for sound. And my wife's upstairs on a Zoom call, so I was like, "You got to just start doing them here. This One, is you way better. Start doing them here, and you got to start watching movies. Yes, here. This is like if this I had be way this, better. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing more shit down here because I, I, this is much better than up uh, upstairs. Sure. In my they office. probably screened Pacino's first movie here. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by these, yeah, seats. these seats have seen a lot of something, man. They're <laughs> they are first heavily Pacino's fucked upon. first play. Yeah. Is, oh fuck, I, I don't know. So. uh what let's 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 dive right in let's get to the bottom of dave if we can because this is the bottom of the barrel so we got to get to the bottom of it and uh what are you what are you working on what what show are you on are you is your show did you get renewed you're like kind of like one of the main characters in a fucking hulu show yeah uh, blessed uh great yeah blessed for that it's uh three seasons and all three seasons are out now um on in america would be hulu but in canada it's on um uh, crave stars okay so i play like the the main 
like uh, the main character's f- one of his friends. He has he has uh, three three friends. And the show is called Rain? Rami. Rami. Yeah. Rami. Okay, I've yeah. never watched this yet, but I just I just sort of found out about it, so I got to yeah. I got to get into it. It's um. Are you a fuck up in the show? Or are you a good no, guy? No, I play a, I play like the, the doctor friend. Who's oh. like who's very like devout and very you know a good like just you know has a wife. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's cool. So it's uh, I'm not a fuck up by any means. Is it so? It's not similar to your life then. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that character drinks alcohol yeah. or, or does anything like that. I think he's just a, a very, you know, that's cool. Straight. I don't know. Straight edge. I guess what? not a straight edge. Just like he doesn't. Was this like through one of your friends, or did you like have to audition heavily for this? I or? did audition. I, I've known Rami Yusuf is is whose show who's the creator and who's the show's uh, uh, main main like lead basically it's, who's the show's about um he, i knew him like years ago through stand up i met him at like the arab comedy festival like a long time ago maybe over 10 years ago oh wow i think he was doing sketch at using a sketch troupe at the time and i and we he was saying he wanted to do stand up and i was like well i've always wanted to act like i wanted to do stand up then and again yeah acting. of course and then like years years later we had kept in touch and I just moved or was moving to L.A. It's where he was at the time. And I think I saw he posted a show he was doing and I uh, I messaged him. And he's like, yeah, come down. And we we reconnected. I stayed with him out there. And then, you know, I think um, around maybe 2017, I was at like a, re- a, a spot in Echo Park. Mm. He had come in with uh, one of the other, uh, I think, writers. And he I think that he was like, hey, man, we sold this show. Um, and then a couple weeks cool. later, I want to say he's like, I had moved to New York right after that, I mm-hmm. think. And he was there too. We were at the Arab festival, Arab comedy festival happens every year in New York. It's been going on for a while. So we were there again. And then he's like, do you want, they started that one in 2001. I think so. It's been around a while. I, I don't know the exact year. I remember doing it in 2005. Yeah. It's okay. been around. Wow. So he was like, uh, you want to audition? I was like, for sure. It was a really bad 9-11 joke that I was trying there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was like, yeah. Like, that's, yeah, I, I didn't even clue. I was no, like. No, it's all good. Um, yeah, it's uh, totally not a good joke anyways. No, we were talking about that last night about, about like, I think, um, about, like, 9-11 jokes. Yeah. About, like. I, I, like 22 years ago. Or specifically, like, Middle Eastern people doing 9-11 jokes. Yeah. And we were just, like, you know talking about me and another comedian friend about like what narrative are you still trying to push yeah like kind of that's why i probably didn't register yeah it's i think like if you're middle eastern doing it it almost feels kind of hack and weird i mean it just feels like well just and if you're white it feels racist like i don't know there's no it's like why are we you know such a tragic thing like why are we pushing what is it going to benefit right either parties here yeah, definitely. That's not. how I kind of kind of look at it. But um, yeah, I didn't notice. But but it's still that festival is really fun. <laughs> and then he he was like, "Do you want to audition?" And I was like, "Yeah." But I I had around that. I think I I, I went to China to do shows, mm. which I never been. That's crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, it was like um, you do shows in English in China, I guess, right? It's like a lot. There's a lot of um, uh, expats, I guess, or oh, people right. teaching English. Of course, yeah. And then there's a mixed, and then and then and then locals, and it was in like Shanghai, Beijing, Chinadu. I'm saying that wrong. Hangzhou, I'm probably saying wrong. In Singapore, wow. so I was there for like maybe like a week and a half. It was very very fun. But at that time, Rami's like, "Hey, do you want to come in for an audition?" I was like, "I'm in. I'm at an airport in <laughs> China." He's like, "Oh, just make, here, take this and make it a monologue." So I did the, I was in, no, I was in Beijing. I remember it. I got picked up and the promoter of that, that show, that city, they were driving back to the hotel and they were going to, they were like going to come back and get me to eat. So when they were coming back, I was like, I got to get someone to help me with this self tape. Yeah. I didn't really know what the show was fully about. And I'm now I have to explain to this person what a self tape. Holy shit. Right. So we're like in an elevator and I'm like, and I have to be like, Hey, can you come to my room? Help me with this uh, self tape, and they didn't really know what was happening. I didn't either, so I s- sit on a chair. I give them my phone, and and they record. And I go, "How was that?" And I remember she 
put the phone down and she goes, do it again. Like she made a signal. And I go, did I just bomb? Wow. <laughs> she didn't even know. She didn't even know what it was, but she knew that was bad. She knew, that, <laughs> she knew what I did in the first take that wasn't, it. wasn't it. That's crazy. Yeah, and then I do it again. And then she's like, that's fine. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why am I taking, <laughs> why am I taking acting tips? <laughs> Or directing tips. I'm like, that's another serious problem. Probably on me. And then I, we're in a group chat, I think, with the organizers of that like run. And I got word from my agents. They're like, you booked uh, these scenes in the pilot. And uh, I messaged that person. And I was like, hey, we did it. Fuck me, man. Yeah. So that film, what? And then... That's a big fucking role, man. Three years recurring fucking role. Well, I didn't even know. And then, like, months later, he, he called You must me. have crushed it in the fucking pilot then, because that's when they would replace people if they don't like you, right? They do it in a pilot. I had a fun time. I got to, I was, I got to improvise, and he would called me after, and he's like, hey, man, we, we the show got greenlit. And Holy I was shit. like, oh, congratulations. And he goes, what? There's like a pause. He goes, what? I go, congratulations. He goes, you're on the show. <laughs> And you didn't even clue in right away? No, I just didn't really know what to what extent yet. I know oh, I had Oh, right, pilot, right, right. Maybe I, I just got like, a couple scenes in the pilot, whatever. Yeah, I, I didn't know. And then, then that was like, I got that, uh, that. We shot it in December and then in April. That's when he messaged me. And then by the fall, we were doing season one. Holy and then shit. Because like, when I looked it up on IMDb, I was like, let's see how much. Because I had never seen it. I was like, oh, yeah, he's got a show. I look it up and I'm like, and you, the, the, the only, the, the, it shows the first four like main people. And I'm like, fuck. Dave's right there. He's really on this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's I think so it's sick, like, man. Um, uh, not can I, I just clicked the plus button. I don't know that's what that's all right. Means, but uh, okay. a little extra, Dave. Then, um, yeah. Uh, uh, and then as the see this past this third season, I was able to do a like a episode. Oh, you got one that's like all your own. Yeah, like, like feature on character. your character. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's like really, he's he's he's. Uh, uh, you know, giving me such a good opportunity, but I mean, I get it. If you don't really know about the show or you don't know what role it is, then you could be be like, you know, I'm 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 not gonna walk around and be like, yo, I'm heavily, I'm like, I'm in this show, like you know, what I mean? right, I mean, right, that's not right. The type of yeah uh, and vi vibe I'm on. Like so that's then, not the credits you're giving people to give you before you go on stage. No, I do. I give them the credits, but they okay, don't know so you to are what extent uh, I'm on the show. So then when they go see it, maybe they're like, oh shit, you're in this thing. <laughs> I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they think. Cause you know, you know, yeah. a lot of there's so much stuff out there, and a lot of like comics or people like yeah. don't watch stuff. Yeah, so they're like, oh, I guess he's on it. I don't know to yeah. what extent, but then like it's basically what I'm saying is like your response is probably I've heard that response many times. Yeah, before. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. but I wouldn't be like, yo, I'm in this many episodes. Like I'm not gonna say. Right. It. Okay. I just assume in my head when I'm like, I'm on this show. Like I'm on it. Yeah. That's how I operate. Like I wouldn't be like. If I was like doing two episodes on a show or one episode, I probably wouldn't be uh, like check out my episode on this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that gets I weird. would like say it once, but I mean like, uh, but when if I'm telling you like I'm, no, on, the I'm on the show, I'm, I'm on, on the show. show. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that's I like that too. Yeah. That's how I approach those things. Yeah, and stuff. I mean, I've never had, I've never had that the uh, experience of like it's kind of like the 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 dream progression, right? You do stand up and then you get to be. Like that character, like not a you're not a main character. You're like a friend or a brother or whatever, you know. And then the next one, maybe you get the yeah. It's like you the, hopefully the you next. know. I remember I I did MTV Live in Canada, and then I was then I got on Mr. D thanks to Jerry D. Oh shit! I, was, I did like guest appearances for two summer, basically the last the two last two two seasons, and Jerry gave me like you know he gave me the, he gave me the chance. And that was my first time actually acting in, a, in an actual, like in a sitcom. That's so I always cool. like. Were you playing like a, a teacher? I played a new teacher. And I give always give gratitude to Jerry. Yeah. Because that helped me like get experience in front of the camera. And Jeez. it was such a fun, like he's like one of the funniest people. And like when you're doing scenes, he's so, so funny. He's like the closest thing we have to a legit comedian star in canada <laughs> yeah like he'll he, like sell he actually moves tickets when he sells shows sure like he's like the only one i could think of he like he he like crushes as well in stand-up but like when you're acting with him in a scene it's like i there's so many parts where i was gonna break oh wow there's a part where I actually is where i had to cover my in an act out i had to cover my mouth from laughing <laughs> he's just like killing it oh, and shit. he's like so i can't explain how funny he is man like i it's like 
just yeah. If you oh, haven't awesome. seen the show, you I've should watch it. it. I've seen a lot of episodes. And it's like, I don't know, it was such a great, it was such a cool thing to be a part of, especially uh, being Canadian. Yeah. I remember I, I was flying from here to Halifax yeah. in like 2017 or something, and I text my my friend and like a um, very good friend and I, we dated back in the day for, for a long time, and and she was around me before I was, before I went home growing up just for laughs when it was like really, really tough. She was actually the person that convinced me to quit my day jobs. Damn. Because I wasn't having a good time. And she, you know, I was scared because three months later, four months later, I was like, uh, Caroline, I'm going to go back. And she goes, no, no, don't worry. Just have patience. And I have never worked since a day job. Fuck. So I remember texting her. I'm pretty sure I texted her at like I was getting Tim Hortons. And I was like, man, I'm going out to film this to be on a sitcom. Um, and, you know, and I want to thank you and, you know, for always supporting and continue. To, yeah, I just, to me, it was like, it's like this is, and then I, I remember seeing Darren Rose because I start we did, we started stand up here in Toronto together. Darren Rose is a funny fucking stand up dude. Holy so shit. So we started and we used to do like his room is like, he had like a room he would run on Young Street and to see him on set, you know, I think we, we I remember, I remember we hugged and we're like, man, we're still out here doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? This Shit. is like this is like oh five or something, maybe or or four, we or oh six we met. And then, then you fast forward to like now we're on I'm you know, he's been on the show every since the yeah. beginning and stuff like that. So it was just such a wicked time. Isn't that insane? Yeah. God damn. I remember I went and saw um a taping of uh I guess we have a Canadian family feud and, and uh really? Jerry Yeah, Hosted. Jerry hosts it. And I went to a taping, I can't remember why. Uh, and then it was so much funnier than than uh, fucking Steve Harvey's Family Feud, because Jerry's really he, it, really funny. Yeah, because I and Steve Harvey's funny fucking guy. Yeah, but I was like legit laughing, not like studio audience laughing. I was laughing. Yeah. I was like, he's ripping some. I don't know how much of it made the cut, right? <laughs> he was ripping some hilarious shit. Yeah, yeah I so couldn't funny, believe man. it. I'm telling you, that's awesome, dude. Fuck, In I want to meet that guy. On camera, off camera, cool. on stage, acting, just like hands down, one of the funniest people. I keep waiting for one of these uh, shows, Canadian shows, to write in like they need like a goofy friend that knows magic. You know, like I keep waiting for that day. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, right? I, like, come on, man, what the fuck? I keep t- I keep uh, hitting that Andrew Fung up with this new Run the Burbs show or whatever. You just keep sending emails. Every I, few, I keep every ta- I keep months. heading. Up, I'm like, hey, where's that wacky neighbor that knows some magic? Or hey, you need a fucking clown at your kid's party in one of the episodes or whatever. I'll take. <laughs> anything man like let's go it's so tough though like you know i'm not not that i know i, I don't have a, a, my own show but like just being around it you're like how does that work like do you just yeah. shoehorn someone in and it's just like kind of feels like it has to sometimes be organic yeah but you don't think that when you're not when you're not when you don't no, know, know there's a show yeah I, I mean, i've got to, i've got to do random magic on like all kinds of shows like fucking uh what do you call it like Justice League and Altered Carbon and Riverdale and all this shit. They always have a random magic character yeah. at some point, and I get to come in and do it, you know. And so I've got a lot of those things, but like I want something that's like yeah, a little bit more substantial, mean. right? Like, like you know. But I I know magic's just niche, and I'm just too far in it. And you're right, and it is it is impossible, even as like the lead, even when it is your show, it's impossible to make those kinds of. I mean, it's just like you. I guess it, I don't. know. It just feels it has to be organic. It really almost. does, for sure. Or it's like the yeah, it's interesting. I don't yeah, know. I never thought that before. Before I wasn't in it. I yeah, was like no, nah, you can just write your friend. Yeah, in. Just write your friend. In. But then you're like, that doesn't <laughs> it doesn't that work. Way. Yeah, it could maybe for some people, but I'm yeah. like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, especially like, uh, yeah. I mean, I remember. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it can at some level, I guess, but also they have to. You have to have something that they want. Uh, or or that they're gonna need because yeah you can't just arbitrarily be like get in here no, yeah no. but it's it, I wish I wish it could <laughs> hey man I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> but I, I do you ever pitch your do you like are you guys that like you write your own shit put together a pitch deck and try and pitch your own shows a lot hundred percent me and like a very good f- good friend and one of the funny it's very funny and like works a lot Ali Hassan we were po- we were pitching. We were in development for like eight years. God damn. Yeah, like two different um, uh, companies and stuff like that. Wow. And then we kind of like just stopped that for a bit with that with that company. And then I, then I had this idea for, uh, you know, it was about Windsor, the city I'm from, but like mental health and Arabs and my family. And we, were been, we pitched all that all last year probably. Damn. Yeah, um, so I always... That seems like, like a... That seems like a- 
uh, something that hasn't been explored enough, right? Like that, that like. No, what? it hasn't, and uh, I mean, it, and I guess it's just finding. It's it's hard. It's finding hard. a home for it, finding Fi- a network finding, that wants it, or well, just like because it it's you know yeah, finding a home or finding somebody to to to, to lock into that vision. But like yeah, we pitched it. It was me and the co-creator Sheb, who's who now like you know he's a showrunner on a bunch of shows in in, in Canada. But he we I had pitched him this basically. Hmm thoughts and like i remember i sat with them at a cafe in montreal and i you know, he just put a recorder out yeah just i started telling him all these stories and he he you know he's he uh, his upbringing is not similar but there's like similarities and stuff like that yeah and we just kind of bonded so um we, we were that was like three four years like getting the creating it and then finding a, a yeah. production company that took it on and then we were pitching it all probably last year Fuck, I, man, I hope that. It was good. It was, it's good. Something like, that's that close to home. I, I, those are the kinds of things I want to see get made so bad. Yeah, and then like, now we're doing another, we're, me and another uh, friend uh, are, are writing something else. But I'm constantly, you know, that uh, yeah. since, the, since the jump, since they, yeah, I've always been, like, trying to write and pitch something. That's the only know? way. Yeah, and and, that, and then along the way, you know, but I've always wanted to be, like, uh, an actor as yeah. well. So then auditioning and getting on TV and, and eventually... You know, um, my end goal is to be in a movie. Who's like career out there, past or present? Are did you are you kind of look at and go like that's kind of the route I was trying to go or I am trying to go or probably the for the past it would probably be like I mean uh, like I loved how Richard Pryor did stand up then movies yeah yeah it's yeah. like you know it's that kind of like thing that I always enjoy like Martin yeah. Lawrence Chris Tucker yeah you got to have because like you got to have people that you're like okay that that's kind of the template. That I like at least to get you started. Yeah, so that's, even like, that's awesome. Even like how what Rami's doing, like his own show, and then in movies, and what Mo yeah. Ammer, who's one of the other friends on the show, his it, it's just like, yeah, I, I uh, but even since I was like 14, 15, like around that time, I would watch comedians I like that would do like comedy, stand up, and then get into TV or movies. It was always the goal or the vision from the jump and like that's why it's like sometimes i find it hard for myself to get motivated to do like a podcast yeah yeah. because like you know that the the times have changed or post video that's why i had to bribe you with picking me up man <laughs> <laughs> no i mean like podcasts oh your own, like my your own, own, your or, own yeah. or like posting videos on a regular because like because it, it it was hard for me to find the motivation because like i was so stuck on that like yeah you know the when, vision of that way. I was like, oh, I'm just going to do it this way. Well, how old were you when you started stand-up? 19, 20. Oh, okay. College so right out of the time. gate, you were like, I'm yeah. doing this. Yeah. yeah. I knew when I was like, I wanted to entertain when I was like young. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to be a performer. I didn't know necessarily stand-up. I just wanted to perform. Yeah. So I knew that very young. It was like the only thing I wanted to do. Shit. Yeah. I played soccer because my dad played soccer. So yeah. So he put me in that. But like, I just wanted to perform. Not necessarily. I didn't know. Then I saw prior tapes. My uncle, oh, my yeah. uncle uh, showed us, showed me like Richard Pryor, Andrew Dice Clay, oh, uh, man. Harlan, Eddie Murphy, and then that kind of like I was like, oh, but it was Pryor that stuck out to me where I was like, I want to do that. Fuck. So that's where it all like, and then seeing people like I really want to be like yeah, like a like a buddy. You know how they do the buddy comedy? Yeah, stuff, wouldn't like, that have? Right? Oh man! So it always was in my head. Is there still room for that? You think out there? Like because yeah, yeah. they don't make a lot of buddy comedies anymore. No, I mean, but I think there's. I, I I I hope they get back to that because they're so fucking fun. And you know, I didn't really, and I always wanted to do drama. Yeah. As well, and then you know. That's probably more what you're doing on this show, really. It's like more because you're not. The, it doesn't sound like you can't be the you can't be the straight edge guy and the comedic I relief. Break, I break like I have like serious moments, but there's like parts in the show where I like the ten. I'll say like silly things and attention gets braille broken. Nice, okay, kind of thing. Like, but um, I do both, okay. which is awesome. Which is like a dream. Yeah, I, I could be, I could be dr- not dramatic, but I could do serious, and yeah. you know, it's just it's a it's a thing I've always wanted to do. That's- Fucking cool, yeah. man. I'm really, really grateful for it. I love I hearing like, that. Yeah. Just to be able to be. Um, so many of our friends, um, it's safe to say you and I are both having good careers. Yeah. And so many of our friends, it's just not like it's a game of fucking bounces, man. Sometimes you get good bounces, bad bounces. And some of our friends are just like, 
they they seem like they've been doing everything right and they just haven't had any of these sort of like breakthrough moments yeah it's like the bounce you're right the bounce or the luck of it or yeah and you're like yeah you're doing everything right i don't yeah. know yours went this way mine went that way maybe next time right but it's like it's hard you just never know and then the bounce is like even the you know i i remember throughout the whole Thing. Even still now, he's like, you'll have ups, one good year, two good years. Yeah, I always think it's like it's like two <laughs> bad years, and then you're like, yeah, it's like I've. Ever... I, always, I always think it's like it's like you threw a football, not a fucking basketball, so you don't know it hits the ground and it goes yeah, yeah, wherever, a, right? Like, so you don't know. Like, I remember a couple years, I was like, man, this stinks, and then then two good years, and then one bad. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's that's why when I saw Darren on set, we were like, man, we're still doing it, bro. Yeah, we're still we're still uh, in this. Yeah, I feel like uh, the first half of this year for me has been a down year. I don't really talk about it, but it's the first time ever I've been like every every year it's been like off and off and off. And this first half of this year, I've been like, ooh, a little bit of a ooh. I, I started to get a, I started realizing, oh, it's not all up forever. There are no, there's like, I, I, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I've been through fucking ups and downs, man. I, yeah, even when you're up too, you're just you don't like, know you're up. <laughs> you want more. And yeah, your up doesn't feel like an up, and then you're like, mm -hmm. oh man, when's my next job? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So you gotta. I don't know, man. I, I I've been through those, and I continuously still go through them. And yeah, it's like it's it's trying to remain calm. But it's very easy easier said than done. Totally, and just breathing, and just being like, okay. But I mean, not and trying not to get overwhelmed because I'm the same. I'm like. I think all even when it's going good, I'm like, this is not. <laughs> yeah. Even when it was good, I'm like, yep. Oh fuck, man, when's it gonna? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know. I gotta find some sense of peace. Yeah. Like, I can't. Well, I was you know, trying to answer. I was explaining this to um, a million comedians, that, uh, but one sticks out for me, like talking to Kathleen McGee about this. I don't know yeah. if you know her. Yeah. And uh, she was like asking me, like. Oh, you know, like getting your own show or whatever. And I'm like, I swear to God, however happy you are right fucking now is how happy you'll be with your own show. Like your happiness doesn't really seem to be affected by it. It like your bank account might be, your profile might be, you might get more opportunities, but you will literally just level up to the next thing, like you said, and you'll want the next thing. And your your overall fucking feeling of like happiness and where your career's at will basically yeah, it won't. It just adjusts with whatever. So you always sort of feel in the same level of panic that wherever you're in. So. If you don't fix what's going on inside, yeah. I remember, you know, this movie I I, I did last. Is it now two years? But it went to Sundance in January. Oh, sick! And I never been. I never thought. Yeah. It's like a. It's like I never been in a movie. That was my first time in a movie, and it's just going to. Just it was like such a beautiful thing, and I didn't. Who, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like overwhelming, and I remember being there and, and and having a great time. And then like a few weeks after, you're like, I mean, me personally, I was like, okay, what well, what's going on next? Man, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh wow, what man? You should just chill out. You went to like the biggest, biggest like one of the biggest film festivals, man. You should chill out, and I just didn't chill out. <laughs> but that's what I mean, where it's like a never ending. It's a disease. Huh. It's a fucking disease <laughs> <laughs> i agree <laughs> can we talk about your i, I want to talk about your stand-up real quick because listen you have one of the most addictive uh cadences when i watch when i listen to stand-up or watch stand-up the way oh, really? oh buddy the way you speak is so fun oh i, I, know, I don't i because i guess when i watch listen to my voice i'm annoyed yeah i have a hard time listening to my own voice but i uh, that's very sweet of you the i've way, never heard anyone say that oh buddy the way the way you intentionally um uh switch words in the middle of words and stuff and like you're like you guys are they're walking it's very slow that like what the stro why are they strolling like the way you kind of always oh. re the reset and like and switch and like part like you don't know what you but then and you change directions like that oh, yeah. i kind of expected that's how you would speak normally which isn't really how you speak <laughs> but on stage it's so addictive and fun because you don't really and maybe then like what and then and i'm like what do you why over here and then that kind of way of talking is so fucking fun dude no thank you i mean uh i imagine i spoke like that all the time. <laughs> i was like this could be a really long podcast and we're only going to talk about two things <laughs> i remember i remember like a uh, a past partner like a, a romantic partner was like recently was like oh you're you obviously you're different from your stage person but i think it's like for some people it's like you Very know, cool. Because mine is like so up, so, yeah, so all over the place that it's like when when I when it's 
yeah, I, and not that I'm com a completely different person. It's just fully turned up. It's yeah, like something when I go up there, it's like something when I grab. You know, you know how it is. You just touch the mic and it's. Oh, total. Oh, yeah. I'm. Just, I'm very it's a fun world. Up yeah, there. yeah. It's like I'm not gonna take that world and fucking take it to a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, just order that way. Yeah. So it's like. <laughs> So uh, it's a lot more controlled, I guess, off stage. But it is sometimes it is me finding also my. But that was definitely a like voice flitting. you had to find. Oh, so I'm sure it is actually. Sometimes you're trying to find out where the funny the is, and like you're trying to, yeah. Because I but mean, it took me forever to find that voice. It, yeah, it wasn't over. It was like ten years. Because that's fucking. It's it's definitely a specific, unique. Like if I saw someone else, I'd be like, oh, you're doing you're doing Dave right yeah, now. Yeah. Because, like, it's, it's a very you move, and I like it. I it's, think it's cool. Yeah, it took, like, um, a lot of it at the beginning was, like, just not controlled. Sure. It was unhinged. <laughs> it was, like, sure. it was long. It just didn't really, there was no control. Yeah. And it just took forever. First, it took forever to find it. And then it took forever to, like, rein it in. Because the first, I think the first. To be digestible. Yeah, because the first time I ever saw your, I think the first thing I ever saw of you, like where I actually sat down to watch something long of yours, was the the Netflix Comedians of the World, and that was unhinged too because I that, was it, so nervous. It was great. Thank you. I forgot it. I remember. I remember Ali Hassan was like, uh, I think he was. I mean, he's like, you're all you know, because he'd gotten used to seeing me live a lot. Yeah, and I think. I did feel like you were doing 40 minutes of material in 30 minutes. Like, I felt like you were really going, like, yeah, yeah. you were hauling ass. <laughs> well, what happened was I, I, I found out about, like, um, in it, I didn't, I didn't, it's, I, I think the way I only had, like, maybe, like, two months. Oh, wow. I found out about it, like, really, like, short notice almost. Wow. And I was putting it together. And I think, you know, to be honest with you, now I look back, it was like I was super excited and nervous. Yeah. And I, that and that merge that's know fun I mean? to watch it was fun to watch but it's like if i could do i mean i wouldn't change I, I don't regret it i wouldn't yeah. really like change anything in a sense that that was the exact emotion i was going through yeah. that's the only thing it was that it was that was what was happening because i was <laughs> super true. excited that i'm doing this thing and but i was nervous and there was so much emotion going so you know by the time i got to like when i did the crave thing two years ago I wasn't, I was still nervous, but I just had a bearing, a better, more experience. So those are your, your only two, uh, did you do like another hour before that somewhere else? I did like, I think in 2016, I, I, you know, I was put an to, album or something. No, I was trying to pitch. We were trying to pitch me. Or I was trying to pitch myself to like, you know how you send in a half hour tape to comedy central yeah. or whatever to get half hour. And I was, you know, I, I remember sending it and chatting with the person and, and they were like, oh, I like, you know, you had them in the first half and the second half. It kind of um, you were talking. I don't know what it just mm. I remember sitting there being like. This sound, this is so tough to do. Why don't I why don't I, why don't I film something where if, if the people that come to see me that like like at the you know the not the massive amount of people but if the, the select you come to see me yeah and they like my act yeah they like that it's like you know sometimes I'll improvise or whatever why don't I just film something yeah at that time that's what I was thinking I was like I know it's not gonna be like on a streaming service or a big channel but I mean at least I don't have to deal with like trying to not almost be me by like recording a half hour how they want it yep and I, I will it'll be lesser seen but i'll be satisfied yeah creatively and i won't have to put myself through the stress so i talked to my agent and uh, i was like like let's just shoot something in toronto 80 seats yeah two shows and he's like okay there was he was working with um the, this individual named millen and uh they do ma um, uh, macaw studios so they produced it so they filmed it for me hmm. you know, in 2016, and then we started to try to pitch it, and then um, eventually we put it out. I think it went to Amazon Prime, and and uh, Vim. It was on is it Vimeo? Yeah, and it was called Good Friend Bad Grammar. And we <laughs> recorded it visual, just like um, like a, a special. A special. Yeah. I think we had pitched it like to Netflix and places like that, and it's like shot so they did such a great job. Yeah, like Millen and its team just like. And then I think I, after that, like years, like um, I think Morgan, my agent, had called me. He's like, "Do you want to submit 
because it wasn't an audio. It was just a special. Right. He's like, do you want to submit this to the Junos? I go, yeah. And then that's how it became oh, that shit. became that that special became audio, and that's how I won. That's how I got the Juno. Fuck. It's called Good Friend Bad Grammar. So I already had done, and then from there was the Netflix, like immediately right after, kind of, and then Netflix two years later, the Crave. Damn, because I've been there's no uh, there's no magic co- comedy magic specials yeah. out there, right? They don't do it. They, they like they don't they don't they know how to do stand up, but they won't do magic ones. And it's fucking insane to me. So I've always had yeah. to self film these things. So I filmed one one time, and I was like, I'll put it out there. I, it just like I'll just put out the, you know, the clips. So I put out like five minutes here, seven minutes here, just like little bits, yeah. right? Fucking millions of views on all these clips. And I'm like, this is insane. So I do another one, 2019. I'm like, I'll put out an hour. No one will buy it. I fucking try pitch it around. Everyone's like, no, we don't, we don't, don't even know what that is. Like, I'm like, it's like, it's like a regular stand up special, except the guy also does magic. Yeah. And like, that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Okay. Canada is going to be tough too, because they don't even do that many specials. Yeah, well, I, I was pitching everywhere, even the states. But right? I'm saying is like, yeah, it's like th- this is a tougher. But I hear you. They, it's like they tell me I'm fucking crazy, so I put it up on YouTube. It gets hundreds of thousands of views on this on this special. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I'm showing people. I'm like, hey, it, there's numbers here, and they're like, yeah, no. So I'm, I got another hour. I'm going to film in like two months here. And I'm gonna just have to put it out myself again. No one will fucking put it anywhere. But that's where we're at now. It's yeah. I guess it's come full circle. Right? So now it's like the move. Now, now it's the move. Like back then, it wasn't like I, I still. Mean, my ego back. still wants the fucking I know, Netflix. Dude. I know. I, I hear you. But I mean, it's like you. You're. Uh, I mean, I. 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 Hundred percent understand that emotion. Yeah. And hear you. And it's like because I wanted it and I got it. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. it feels good. Yeah. But I mean, it's like on the other end, you're like, I also would like to post clips and get a million. Right. That would be nice. Too. So it's always uh, <laughs> grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. But that's I. And now more, I think it is the move to just do it yourself. Shoot something and like. And I yeah, I think I, I would like a couple yeah. years or a year ago, I had this idea um, of I, these old bits about like failed relationships and i had like i was i forgot what i was doing but i was it was around i was sitting on a bench i was going to do the corner comedy club and my boy was going to come watch me yeah and um i'm sitting on a bench on queen street in front of the scotia bank yeah, to yeah. warren's cup and my legs were <laughs> oh, crossed no. and he took a picture he was across the street he sent me the picture while i was i look up and he's standing there and i was like then we look at it i was like what a cool pic they look lonely yeah you know and um homeless <laughs> and i my boy ray he does like the artwork for me and he we we had put together a show i put a show together and i think it was called i love her or something no we just put together a show with that and i was like oh i want to make an album like a like an ep oh cool like nathan mcintosh is a very very funny stand-up comedian um he's canadian but he lives in new york and i think he put out an ep a couple of years i could do. and i was like what a cool idea like a comedy EP, you know how like yeah. music, obviously they have extended that an album and an EP. I was like, let me do this thirty minutes, and then we had so we had that artwork, and then it, and I shot it at the corner, same people, Macaw Studios, they shot it, and we called it. It was first called I Love Her, but then it, I changed it to Miseducation of a Fuckboy, <laughs> and they shot it in black and white, and it's on. And we put it on YouTube. I think um, last uh, January. That's a choice. January, That's a choice to put it on, like go black and white with it, just to make. I can't, it, it, They showed me the final. I mean, this is this is probably telling of like I should really be more invested. But they showed <laughs> me the when it came out. I'm like we. I'm like it's in black and white. They're like, yeah. I go, did I say that? They're like, I don't know. I don't think you did. <laughs> wow. I didn't even know. Crazy. They did it, and it's and it's really cool. And they shot it like. I guess really, didn't Bird throw black and white at one time too? Yeah. yeah. But it's really, really fit the whole vibe of it. Right. It would make sense. Yeah. And um, huh. It was like really, really fun to do. And again, but again, it went. We put it. We our whole idea was like let's just put it on YouTube. So the, and chop up the clips basically. Are you, are you able to um, are you able to to you're able to obviously develop material pretty fast and you seem like you put out a lot of stuff over the last fucking seven years. Yeah, I mean it's like I mean my family gives me a wealth of material. My my, <laughs> my 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 Middle Eastern my Lebanese family. It's like my brother will give me stories. He'll tell me about what's happening in the family. My sister will. My mom. My dad's a very unique individual. Yeah, like very. 
multiples. There's like a, I could probably do days of stories of him, just him and how he interacts. And I think it's like, you know, yeah, it's like over time. I think it took me a while to get to that point of like putting something out that yeah. I had like years of material probably. Like I wasn't putting out right before that. I, I don't think I put anything out. I might have put something out like like in 2006 or seven. Right. So I had a lot of years to develop. What's uh and all your family still they're still in Windsor? Yeah, all in Windsor, yeah. So you just go there, dip in for a while, get some get some stories. Or they'll call me, like my brother will call me all the my brother will call me and he'll tell me. He told me this one story. I've never done it on I don't think I've ever done I've done, tried it on stage a couple of times, but my dad's good friend is a mechanic and um he tries to get everyone to take if the car is something wrong with their car, tries to take it to um to the mechanic, his friend. Um, so my brother, he gets my brother Joe's having problems with his car. He gets it to go to his mechanic, and um, Joe's gonna send him the money, I guess, but he didn't send him it right away. <laughs> so my brother is going home, gets out of his car. He's walking to his front door. My dad pulls up in his car. He rolls the window down. I think it was like our old van. He goes, uh, my brother's name is John, uh, Joe. So he calls him Joseph in there. He's Joseph, and my brother turns around. He's like, didn't tell him I mean, he was coming. Yeah. So he goes, what's up? He goes, uh, do you have the money for the car? And then uh, my brother's like, what? He goes, do you have the money for the for the mechanic? And my brother's like, yeah, I'll get it to him. He goes, okay. He goes, you better get it to him. And then rolled up the window and drove what off. The fuck? Fuck, like, what the yeah. fuck? That's so good. Why would? <laughs> what are you in the mall? Yeah, like, like what? You pressing your own son. <laughs> He, my brother's like, what the hell? What was that? Oh. I'm your son. And then he, so he'd tell me stories like that. And then I could just that is figure fucking out wild. how to. So, and my brother Joe is like really, really funny. Yeah. He's not a comic, but he has the cadence of a comic. Yeah. And he tells stories. Oh, so it's best. almost like he's delivering the full. Oh, the It's already he, done. You just got to. Yeah, he tells stories like a comic. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. and he But he doesn't do stand up. Yeah. So he just really knows like if he's sitting with us, he'll deliver. Like he's delivering oh, bits, man. you know. You meet those yeah. people; they're not comics, and they're just. My buddy Quinn, I used to be a force firefighter yeah. with him. He used to tell these hilarious stories, and like I've literally, in a pinch, in a in a corporate, told one of his stories just the way he told it to me, yeah. and it fucking murdered. But they can, I think, if you told them to do stand up, they would I think fuck they it would all up because they're then they're thinking about it. Yeah, and exactly. They, I think if my brother went on stage, he would be like panic. Yeah, and it's like no, dude, just no, do it the way you did it. Because they're naturally, he, my brother is like naturally, naturally funny. Like, yeah. I mean, he has like so many of these. So mm. that's where I'll, I'll, I'll get the material. That's cool. And then from other situations, but a lot of that comes from there. So you must have another hour right now, not because like you put the one on Craves, and you probably you're doing a lot of shows, so you probably have a whole. I have something that I'm going to try, hopefully, to get out next year. Yeah. It's, um, I I did a I just did a show in New York. Uh, Union Hall like a few days ago and I like there's maybe like 15 minutes out of there 20 minutes out of yeah. like 40 minutes okay that, like I could maybe start to build on and are you in are you in just for last this year I show? am yeah I'm doing a, a show um, outdoor show with uh, Paul Elia who's very very funny um, it's called it's his, his show it's called low-key comedy cool and um, it's like an improvised like we both go up together Oh shit! And like, um, we'll improvise, and then we'll bring the comic on. The comic does like seven minutes or whatever time, yeah. And then they stay on with us. We come back on. Okay. And then we're just improvising, and um, we're doing t uh, at the outdoor stage. If you want to adjust for us, it's free because it's an outdoor, yeah, outdoor show. Yeah, I did that before. And then I'm doing the Russell Peters Gala on July. 27th i think it's a 9 45 p.m show oh that'll be fun so yeah he's probably got some pretty good comics on that one he and, does, and you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got yeah i mean they're really good actually who I else did you know list. who else is on it robbie hoffman's on it okay yeah um like uh, there's he's doing four like he's hosting oh okay because i like four. i feel like i've seen people post about it and i i, I don't remember yeah, i know ali is. pierce is doing one. Oh, okay right no nope. um uh there's a lot. He's. I like how Russell's them. everywhere right now. Like he's just like uh, he's really lending his name to a lot of cool shit like that. Right. Yeah. It brings a lot of eyes. Right. You know, because people are like, oh, Russell Peter presented this something, whatever. Yeah, so that's the guy. I mean, like that. You know, you're, that's a legend. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because anyway, he's on the fucking. He does the Canadian roast battle, whatever. On yeah. he's. I remember watching that. when I got to the city. I'll never forget it. 
I remember getting to the city. I already, I already knew who he was. Yeah. Because he, you know, he did do when he'd come to Windsor at the Yuck Yucks. But I remember like the energy at the downtown Richmond Yuck Yucks, bro. I've never, I, I don't even think I've ever, I mean, it's like the top, I never felt like it was so, it was like so um, hype in there when he was like headline. Damn. Like you can feel the I've vibe. I've never seen him live. But this, you, I'm. It was very rare that you're like you feel the vibration of the fucking room. Holy and shit! The excitement. I think Ron Jossel might have brought me. Oh yeah, I love Ron. And um, I'll never forget. No, um, Jason Rouse. I he had come to Yuck Yucks in Windsor, and I was going to visit Toronto because I was thinking of moving there. And he told me to go. He got me in to see Russell. Fuck yeah! And I never forget it. And he's just like, that's the guy, man. That's huh. the guy. That's like a legend. And because um, I remember I did the gala last year. He hosted the gala last year, yeah. one of them, and I was on that gala. And he's just like, yeah. Yeah, I never hear anyone say anything bad about him. Fucking nice guy, but like just super fucking talented. He super opened famous. up so many doors for everybody. So many doors. So many doors, man. Especially too, starting at the time, probably in Canada, like back in the day, I can yeah. I can't only imagine how like some of the hurdles or the, how tough it could be. Yeah. You know, um, and it seems like in his career, I feel like I've heard him say on podcasts, like he, they felt like he got passed over a lot about some shit that, sh- you know, should have come his way, given how fucking popular he was. And he was like not getting. But he's, yeah. he but he didn't get bitter about it in a way. Like, not that I've ever heard. Seems no, like he, and then he just I mean, he just like he just made his own made his own thing. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah. like it's like fine. I'm fucking forge my own path over here. All over the biggest comic in the world. It's crazy, man. World. Not like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 the as they say the uh, the, the goat. Yeah, yeah, man. Term the goat. Fucking the goat for real. That's awesome. I love that shit. That's cool. It was like a rapper talking to another rapper, and he was telling him he thought goat was like an actual goat. <laughs> he thought they were calling they were calling each other a goat, and he goes, "What?" He goes, goat. <laughs> no, he means goat is greatest of all of all time. <laughs> yeah. oh, I thought you guys were saying goat. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I thought that was so funny. That like, is funny, man. For like, how long did he think that? He's like, why are they calling each other goats? I, uh, dude, you ever hear? I have shit like that where, like, yeah, like you, you just go for a long time, just like not understanding what a term means. I do that all the time. I was I saying like, uh, people would say like they'd have a term like, oh yeah, there's no love lost between those two or whatever. Like about two people, like, and I, I didn't know. Like I just I thought it meant the opposite of what it means. If, if you say if you say yeah. that, then uh, that means that that they uh, that they hate each other. They're, oh no, love lost between means they don't like each other. Yeah, and I oh, I, I didn't know that. I thought I, I thought it was the other way around. So I was like using it wrong for like a long yeah, time. Yeah, I thought it was like no love lost. Like they're like, like no they're, the distance didn't it didn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I was so I I was saying it wrong one day. And my friend was like, "What the fuck? He's yeah, like, they okay. fucking hate each other." I was like, "I what?" And I. Anyways, I should like that. Like, yeah. Well, I'm not good at English. Okay, that makes as sense. Well. Good. <laughs> good. I didn't know if you're good or not, but I'm yeah. not good at English. <laughs> no, I I uh, I just I just uh, wrote a book, and uh, I had I had two editors because I was like, I'm good at telling stories. I'm not good at like making them coherent for people yeah. to read. So I, I had one guy like translate my stories into the actual written word that sort of makes sense, and then I had another editor come in and like edit it proper for like grammar and all this other i mean but that's the that's uh yeah, i needed two people yeah yeah i mean that's <laughs> that's that's good yeah it's it's better yeah. for it now for sure but then i did the audiobook and i just took it all back and went my way with it that's when you can shine yeah that's, that's when i was when like read the audiobook grammar. i'm like fuck i'm not reading yeah, this story I'll, let me just tell you the way i tell yeah, it <laughs> close the need. book here's what happened <laughs> i don't know what it fucking says on the page but let me tell you about that time oh man you ever do any like you ever have to do any soul crushing gigs these days or you or you get pretty good uh, cuz I like have had to do some cruise ships recently and they've been hurting me. They I mean I, I I just some I just got there was just somebody messaged me to do a cruise ship. I just don't think I'd do well in that format. You will on Virgin. If it's not Virgin, don't go. But if it, if it is a Virgin ship, if it's like Richard Branson's fucking Virgin Cruise Lines, yeah. you go on that one because it is great. They're, okay. There yeah, are no just, no kids allowed, and they're all, all everyone's like forty five years old. They're like, do your regular fucking comedy club act. They actually have a club on state uh, oh, in the wow. boat where it you will walk in there and feel like you're in a fucking proper comedy club, and you will fucking slay. But any other, I've done six different cruise ships. Yeah. Everything else is like 
it's like the wor- you feel like you're at the worst corporate of all time. That's what I mean. I never really got into corporates. I remember doing one um, a couple a couple months ago, and it was awesome. It was yeah. in Montreal. You get the right one. They're it was it great. was a cool one. It was like with Just for Laughs. I had such a great time. Oh, hell yeah! And it was the first because I don't really do them. Yeah. I just uh, you know I I I I just didn't find my footing in it. And also I'm like. I like to swear and and um, yeah. I get agitated. Yeah. You know what I mean. I don't like. I'll improvise and I'll like. I'll say fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, totally. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of love, <laughs> love swearing, so it's oh, like um, there's just such a, you know, nothing against like you know it's great to be clean as well, but there's just nothing. There's so something so sweet about being like, man, fuck that. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I sure and not as a crutch, just like just something about the language is like cool. And, what? I love it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So the, then I can't do it there. So but I mean, that wasn't soul crushing. I really love that corporate that I did. I loved it. it I was like I uh, it's so weird because like like you said, like not like a crutch, but I'm doing a TV spot coming up. And uh, there, there's a line that I say. Which I, I I like. It's such a funny. I go shut the fuck up, right? And it's like it's like a little throwaway line, but they won't let me say it. They're like, can you can you say shut the hell up or shut the heck up? And I'm like, it doesn't doesn't ring. It doesn't the work. The crazy part about it is like, who are we protecting? That's what I'm saying. The crazier part, not the crazier part, is like I like I have nieces. These they are fucking know what's going. They're yeah. I mean, there's not they're on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing you. It's just such a weird thing now. I it doesn't make sense now in this time. Yeah, because like these, if you're trying to protect kids, they're probably on the internet when they're like three. Yeah, or four, like not three, but like you know what I mean. Like they're on the internet. I wasn't on the internet like that. Even like on air- airplane, the seat back TV, I can watch shows and they'll like leave the titties in. You know, I can see like some. Yeah, yeah. you can see some bare ass titties on a plane, and I'm sitting next to like a little kid. You know, and, and like watching, and, and then. It but doesn't on TV, matter. It's like I don't know, but I mean, yeah, yeah whatever. Is, I hear it, you. it only sounds it, that There's joke. Some words you just need that word. You need, you need I mean, that for word. That joke you're doing, you really need the swear word. You have to. Else, I'm like, I'll just skip it. I won't even say it. I'll do something else. That's better because it's like I'm not gonna. Yeah, so no, because then you're doing that joke a disservice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then like I've been saying it this way for fucking four years. Like, I can't not. It, do it, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm probably gonna say it anyway. You guys can cut it out. I don't even know. Actually, it's like such an, a habit to. Uh, I don't know. It's tricky, man. Yeah, I feel like. Uh, I feel like I love doing. I I love working. My uh, I do a lot of straight stand up yeah. when I go out, uh, because the tricks I can I can tell if a trick's gonna work, but I cannot tell if the fucking jokes are gonna work. No. So like I have to just take it out sometimes, and um and yeah I try, but I I've made. And I still do because I don't do a lot of straight stand up, so I still make a lot of mistakes that maybe I shouldn't. And sometimes I do get a, a little bit on the on the swear train when it's not going well. Yeah, it kinda, it's like it's I can kinda, see it. I get crutchy. With yeah, it. you get cr- there. I, look, I'm saying there are times where I. No, you're a professional. You know what you're doing. I'm no, a little I bit. I use it the- as a crutch, like sometimes too, where I'm like, if something's like, it's not getting the response that I want, yeah. and you just go. I think it's just like you get angry. Yeah, so your that's body what it reacts is. In a sweary <laughs> this way. is what I would it's say like, normally. Yeah, yeah, it's like, well, I, <laughs> I am fuck. angry, and then you just start going. You know, Yo has a good swearing too. Is like when he swears, I love it. Is like when Bill Burr swears. Yes, when Bill oh, Burr is like, the best. Hey, you fucking <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get the fuck out of here. Like it just has like gonna fucking it, that whole oh, it's so it. so fun to watch and hear you're like man yeah <laughs> he swears the best yeah 100 percent. i well, even, would say motherfucker yeah oh yeah for sure He's like so cool but even burr's like the one of the only people who's like solo podcast i can listen to because he's swearing and ranting all by himself and it's just him and i'm like yeah you're one of the only people that can actually yeah. do that and i'm just he like, has a great is... cadence yeah that's what it that's is for sure. too right it's like it's like the it's the cadence you if you want to use to yell at somebody yeah yeah like in traffic too yeah you gonna fucking move or not like yeah <laughs> <laughs> so good yeah man i uh i'm a big fan no it's it's good it's it's also weird too i think being uh people like I don't know people that that do comedy squeaky clean. Uh, it can still be super funny, and there's some people that are like super dark, like Jason Rouse or whatever. Yeah, and that I'm like, it's still like, you can find people can be funny in any fucking way possible. Like I'm not like it, I don't have any allegiance to anything. Whatever makes you the funniest for you. But some people that are like that, that I don't like that because it's too dark or because it's too clean or because he swears too much. I'm like I think you're looking at it the wrong way. 
Just like do you like just watch it and just try and try oh, and you think they're disc they're some people they're, are discounting um, it because of because they're not even giving it a chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a buddy that, that that like he really if it's clean he won't he'll just inherently not like it. And I'm like, watch Nate Bargatze. It's fucking Nate's, funny, yeah, dude. Nate's like it's funny. It's super. And he's funny. like, nah, nah. It's too, it's, like, and I'm like, what? If it's Nate's, if it's not fucking if it's not Tony Hinchcliffe, he doesn't want to hear it, kind of thing. You know, if it's not super like. You know, like I don't nah, know. No, you gotta watch Nate. I'm just like, like it's great. Yeah. So I, I always have to like, I'm like, no, man. I, I will literally watch any comedy, and I can judge it pretty much on the merits of like whether it's good or not. You know, and I, I try not to bring too much of my own Thing in style it. to it. I don't know, but that's just some people are just real fucking. They're sticklers. They are, and I'm like, I, I wanted to use that word. They're sticklers. Yeah, they are sticklers. They're Ryan sticklers. <laughs> uh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> stupid the yeah i don't know I, I i'm i'm such a fucking huge fan of comedy man i love it so much it's uh and like every now and then i have to do like these corporates i don't like and i yeah. and i know they're not gonna like comedy so i end up doing just like much more magic just straight okay. magic and every now and then i have to do that and i realize how f- unnatural it is for me to do magic without being funny about it and just do straight like Cause they're not going to receive it. They, yeah, they don't. They don't like what I'm. They don't like the kind of jokes I'm doing. So they just want to hear. They just, just want to have the magician come do the tricks. I this is a tough place. To and I can. I just shut up and I just do the tricks. But I'm like, man, this is so boring. And like, I feel like kind of like a hack. And like, I feel like there's no. I can't find any way to put any kind of me in here. I feel like I'm just doing tricks I learned out of the books 15 years ago. But that's corporate. Though. I mean, sorry, corporate <laughs> yeah. is like you. You know, kind of got to a little bit. You're dealing with these rules, right? Yeah. So it's not like it's not natural. But again, who are we protecting? Because every single person there, the boss, the HR lady, everybody, they're all going to go home and they're all going to watch and laugh at the same. Yeah. You know, they're all going to go secretly buy the Louis C.K. special or something, right? It's, a, it's like, like um, uh, like a facade. That's it's what like, it it's, is. It's a show. Yeah. It's a show. It's like a company. I work at a corporate company. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, we, you know, our boss is here. We don't want to, you know, I got to look. It's all. The corporates I do love is like when I get one from like uh, Northern Alberta and they're like, uh, it's a mine or an oil rig or something like, company. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's just a bunch of oil guys like come through and just do whatever you want. I love those corporates. They don't give a shit. Yeah, those guys are, yeah. They're, they're like, say whatever you want, yeah, do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, they're yeah, just all like literally cocaine, going to the bathroom, doing lines and coming yeah, back out. It's, I was like, especially if it's, it's in Alberta. Yeah. There's there's like, lines of coke. Yeah, it's, that's all it is. So no, those, those are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> probably a lot of people. Yeah. You guys still have to pay me in cash. So yeah. you, can't just, you can't just try and give me bags after. <laughs> it's not going to go well. <laughs> just a bag of bags of coke? Yeah. Like, oh, man. I thought you said it was cash. Yeah. Uh, we lost that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh man, nah, it's good. I like. Uh, I like. What's uh, what's so? What's next for you? What's the next big thing? You're you're in New York, uh, on and off, and you might. Uh, where, I'll, I'm gonna move there. Move back there in the fall. Do you have like a home club in there that you? That where do you go normally when you're there? Um, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. I don't have a home club. I'll just do. I'll do rooms and spots uh, yeah. around the city. I mean, I'm I'm probably. Um, gonna go like on the road in canada nice. probably in, in, in and the u a little bit in the u.s in the yeah. fall so be good. uh and then um a movie that i was uh in with uh one of the act uh, that i co-starred with uh daisy ridley and then a wonderful cast of, oh yeah of uh of actors um that film should be coming out sometime in the in the fall i think or I don't know, and this year, not not the fall, fall, but sometime this year, it should be coming out. It's called Sometimes I Think About Dying. Okay. And um, yeah, hopefully. Cool. That's that's some. Um, How do you get that one? You just another just audition came your way, and you just crushed that it. That one was they had, the director, I, I believe, had seen me on Rami. Oh, okay. And then and then we had we we she'd reached out and we discussed got on zoom are you sleeping your way to the top is that how you're doing this no <laughs> is that how you're doing this <laughs> no. yeah no okay you no, can tell us it's fine not, yeah. not, not not this guy oh man i would if i could not not just like sleep like sex wise no i have a lot of duds my yeah. friend <laughs> a lot of no one's no one's i i'd be if you I be you'd probably find like maybe three people out there that'd be like, man, what a time I had! <laughs> <laughs> like uh, three's not yeah, bad. Maybe <laughs> there's no one really sitting around the table being like, hey, oh, let me tell you about this one yeah, guy. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, 
I hung out with him. He was a lot of anxiety. He told me that, you know, his mom was a germaphobe. And, you know, it's really, that's when we spent our night. <laughs> and we got McDonald's. Uh, and then he said he likes ice cream. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> Not, oh. No. But that's, that's I'm excited for that. It was like a great cast. Yeah. Um, Just, it, it, it was a short film short film originally that got into Sundance. Wow. And then they, they made it into a full length feature. It's called some you could see the short on uh YouTube, I believe. It's called Sometimes I Think About Dying. I'll check that out. That sounds good. That's I, I yeah, I like uh I like I don't watch many of the films that go to Sundance, but I feel like I should because every time I do come across one I'm they're like, great. Yeah. <laughs> they're so good. There's a reason yeah. they're at the Sundance. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of, it, I think it, they showed it in Cannes as well. Wow, it's that's cool. Doing, um, uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. Fuck yeah, I love that. Well, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time here, buddy. We got to go get something to eat because I'm pretty hungry. Yeah. And then I'm going to take you to wherever it is you're staying. Airbnb. That's my plan right now. Airbnb. Uh, thank you, guys. This is uh, go watch any number of this guy's things. Uh, you're gonna love it. I can definitely vouch for the the the, the stand up specials I've seen. And um, yeah, thanks for getting to the bottom of it with us. And thanks thank you for coming for through, me. man. This is good. Fuck yeah, I like these without Chris. This is good. All right, see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Bottom of the barrel. Hey. Bottom of the barrel. Hey.